Hey there, movie lovers. I've got another interesting one for you guys today. It's not exactly a cinematic masterpiece. As a matter of fact, a lot of critics hate this one, and for good reason too. But guess what? It's so bad, it's good. Yep, that's right, I'm covering the infamous MTV production that is Joe's Apartment. So strap in as we head into the roach-infested territories of this movie. Literally. The movie starts off with a song insulting New York City and its river, but that's the good part. And this here, well, here we see a freaking cockroach fly over the city while singing in the worst possible voice you can imagine. And now we meet our lead Joe, who wants to tell his mom that he's made it to New York, but keeps getting smacked and robbed. He's got a hard time finding his house and has to make things worse for himself by running into a dude all bloodied and messed up. He asks him if he's alright and he surprisingly rises to tell him that this was just a test. However, he's not okay because he apparently is one of the most pretentious artists in New York. Get this, his name is Walter Shit. Yep, you can't make this shit up. Joe tells him that he's looking for an apartment for a hundred bucks. And I guess it's justified that everyone makes fun of him for trying to find a rent-controlled flat. Then we see this old lady, Mrs. Grotowski, who gets tripped over by these two goons called the Blancos. She survives after the excessive falling and gets back up as if it was nothing. Damn, that's one tough woman. And then… she somehow pops out the keys to the house from her mouth and they fall into Joe's hands as he passes by the building with Walter. Oh yeah, she dies too. Don't ask for logic in this movie, you ain't gonna find it. So Joe's pretty happy that he's found a rent-controlled place to stay at. But then again, this is like the worst possible freaking house ever because there's so many cockroaches. They all seem to think Joe's cool because he's fine with living in a dirty house with a dirty lifestyle that involves eating sandwiches that have cockroaches in them. That is gross, bro. Wow, he avoids a scene with the Blancos later by paying his $50 rent. Well, I guess the price is justified. The Blancos continue to kill the residents quickly so that they can empty the building soon. Hmm, I wonder how that works considering the fact that suspicious deaths need to be investigated. Okay, now we meet Lily Dorothy. She's only in this movie to serve as Joe's love interest, so don't bother asking about her job or her love of plants or anything like that. We finally get some exposition regarding the Blancos. Basically, they're Alberto Blanco's brothers. That dude has a deal with Senator Dorothy, yep, Lily's dad, to empty Joe's building because he wants to demolish it in order to build a prison on the same piece of land. He wants to empty the building fast, so the Blancos attack Joe in the middle of the night. The Roaches decide to help their buddy and give the bastards a piece of their mind. Honestly speaking, this scene gives me the creeps. I mean, I'd rather be attacked by a human than those filthy insects. Anyway, after an excessively long encounter, the goons are thrown out and then the roaches introduce themselves to Joe with another song. He passes out from shock and wakes up later thinking he's had a nightmare. He almost eats some of the buggers for breakfast, but then quickly realizes that he's living with 40,000 cockroaches. They try to reason with him to let them live in peace, but he's having none of it and goes out and gets a job. Unfortunately for Joe, they follow him everywhere, and their presence leads him to getting fired again and again from jobs that I don't really understand. Like, is it really that hard to get hired? Anyway, the roaches run into trouble when they meet their worst natural predator, a freaking house cat. But then another song breaks out that involves a cowboy cockroach, a goldfish falling into Joe's mouth, and a mini battle between Joe and the cat. He throws the cat away and the roaches celebrate. Later, Joe tries to land himself a nice job in a nice suit, but then Walter gets in the way and paints him purple. He says that he wants to make him a minority even though I don't think purple skins exist in the world. Well, then again, he does ask Joe if he can drum, and the answer's still no, but that's still good enough to land him a job in the shit band. No really, the band is named shit. <laughs> anyway, Joe begins promoting the band and bumps into Lily, who's doing her own posters for her community garden. This kicks off their first conversation and the background music lets us know that these two are going to be lovebirds soon. Joe tries to write a letter to impress her, but the cockroaches mess up his thinking with their creepy perverted suggestions. I ain't even going to say what they said to Joe. It's really bad. Lily needs fertilizer for her garden, so Joe actually goes around gathering up a whole bunch of poop for her garden. No, I'm not kidding, he actually does it. He's on the bus stinking up the joint and notices Lily from his window. However, 
She's hugging a dude and this upsets Joe. You guys should know that the guy's face is covered, so he's definitely not her boyfriend for the plot purposes. But we really do have to deal with it right here. As expected, the dude turns out to be her dad. Damn. They then go out for lunch and daddy decides to tell Lily about his prison plans, but she realizes that it's on the same spot as her garden and she ain't gonna let her 30 day gardening permit go to waste. Joe comes back home with a huge pile of shit because he's upset with Lily. The roaches love this unexpected gift and Joe also gets some good news when he learns that his mom's got him a job interview at P.I. Smith, a company that sells urinal cakes. The owner's a bit of a weirdo and he's happy that 20 million men pee on his name every day. But yeah, he's also super creepy and keeps harassing Joe about his mom. Yeah, I'm not gonna get into the details, but somehow Joe gets hired. He comes back home to relax but finds the roaches watching what looks to be cockroach porn. Man, I'm gonna puke, that's gross, what the hell is this movie? Oh, and flowers have magically grown out of his shit pile too. Yep, that's the kind of shit we're dealing with right here. Joe brings the flowers to Lily and she's pretty impressed by the gesture. He beats around the bush but somehow manages to convince her to visit his band's performance in exchange for a bunch of urinal cakes. Don't ask, just go along with it. Later, he tells the roaches not to ruin his date, although he's going to need a whole lot more than that to make up for his crappy apartment. Also, for some random reason, P.I. Smith's urinal cake. Wait, P. Smith? Oh, P. Smith. Ah, oh, okay, right. I guess that's how you say his name. Well, anyway, his urinal cake division has been shut down and the owner is suddenly out of business, so Joe's jobless again. It's time for shit to go down as they perform in the club, but Walter's idea of a performance turns out to be Joe sucking hard at playing the drums. Well, to be fair, he did say that he wasn't an expert. Unfortunately for him, he gets booed by the crowd and everyone makes fun of him, including his own bandmates. But Lily seems to have taken a shine to Joe, and she even tries to console him after that horrendous performance. He decides to tell the truth about himself and angrily asks her to go back to her boyfriend, who he now learns was her dad. Lily doesn't seem to be too bothered by his stalker behavior, so he invites her back to his place. Bro, that's a horrible idea. Now we witness another horrible musical by the cockroaches in his toilet, which only makes things worse. Joe and Lily reach his place and it's a miracle that she hasn't already run away from seeing how dirty it is. Things get a little hot and heavy, but then all the cockroaches fall down on... Oh no, oh my god, this is really bad to watch. Lily finally does something smart and runs away. She finds her garden completely destroyed by the Blancos and decides that this place doesn't deserve good things anyway. Joe's had enough of this nonsense, so he decides that it's time to take on the pests. What follows is a very silly montage where Joe tries to exterminate them, but he fails miserably. The cockroaches tie him up and dress him up as if he's attending a funeral or something. They want to kill him because they can't risk him ratting them out to the public, you know, because they can't talk. There's a brief war of words, but the Blancos have other plans and set the place on fire. The roaches run away and that allows Joe to get out of the building alive, but the building blows up so I guess he's homeless again. He tries to get through to Lily but she clearly hates him now, so he's got to figure something else out. He heads back to the broken down building and tries to vent out to the cockroaches, but only gets knocked out by the Blancos again. The roaches find him in his sorry state and all of a sudden they feel bad for the schmuck despite wanting to kill him not too long ago. They get together and decide to help Joe get back on his feet and also get in there with Lily. This kicks off another montage that makes no sense at all, but at least they manage to create a beautiful garden around Joe by the end of it. Oh, and they also register a grant that somehow makes him the owner of the land too. Once again, don't argue with the movie logic, please. Damn. Lily and her dad drop by and find the miraculously created garden. The cockroaches try to be good wingmen for Joe by telling her that he loves her. Joe also hands over his grant to her and this seals the deal. Since there's no point in carrying on with the movie anymore, the senator also switches sides and decides that this place is better off as a garden. The Blancos didn't like the look of this, so they figure killing everyone is their best bet. The Roaches ain't having any of that bullshit, so they conveniently drop them into a sewer and that's the last we ever hear of them. And now, Joe finds himself in Lily's apartment, but so do the Roaches. The movie ends on a weird musical number where the cockroaches dance while Joe and Lily get it on. There you go guys, that was the movie. I don't really know how to express my feelings for this one, but uh, it's definitely a trip, that's for sure. 
Anyway, make sure you like and subscribe if you want more unorthodox recaps and let me know in the comments if you got any suggestions. I'll see you in the next one.